is up everyone again i am sitting here in the evening working on my challenge content and i started thinking about the bodybuilder diet versus a ketogenic carnivore or keto omnivore diet and i think a lot of people are confused between those diets and i wanted to talk about if you can become successfully lean and build muscle on a bodybuilder diet or not, let's get into it. I wanna show you guys a meal plan I found online and I wanna deconstruct this because I get a lot of people trying fitness competitions, trying to do bodybuilder diets, completely confused. So for the old school old OGs, this will be like, duh. But for the new people, this will be very interesting. So let's get into it. All right. Let's check out this diet here. I'm going to dissect this and how this affects the body. All right, so it's got your day one, day two, day three, day four, like seven days, and down on the, the sidebar to the left, it's got breakfast, mid-morning snack, lunch, late evening, late evening dinner, late evening and then dinner, which is kind of bizarre to me. Okay, so meal one for breakfast, on day one, it's skim milk and oats. Day two, we're having skim milk and like muesli, which just is oats with, with sugar on it. Then day three, we have skim milk with cornflakes. Four, skim milk with oats. Five, skim milk with cornflakes. Six, skim milk with, again, sugar-covered oats. And then seventh, skim milk and oats does this diet just for the first day does that make any sense well i'm going to explain to you how it doesn't number one skim milk is literally taking all the fat out it's taking the love and this is pasteurized cooked slimy snotty a1 cows that are hormone injected eating freaking soy we want to know why men have issues with too much estrogen or difficulties building muscle, having low testosterone, alopecia, balding, depression. Look at the first week of just breakfast, which is skim milk and oats. Then we have oats, right? So they used to, well, they still give oats to horses, but this is a low, excuse me, nutrient dense, low quality starch. And I don't recommend it. It's devoid of a lot of nutrition. And then they'll just, and it, it, this is illogical. You're going from oats to muesli. Muesli is sugar or honey covered oats. And then we have skim milk again, which is counterintuitive because, right, they're having skim milk, take out the fat. But then we're, we're going to give you sugar. And then skim milk with corn flakes, corn, genetically modified, non organic crops horrible well let's get in on uh the mid-morning snack mid-morning snack which it's not a bad idea to have a mid-morning snack right breakfast mid-morning snack at least they're trying to eat every few hours on this weird plan but we've got an apple one apple four almonds and a scoop of protein do <laughs> There's the apple, okay? It's probably health, the healthiest thing on this whole page so far when it comes to skim milk and oats and cornflakes. But then we have almonds, which are very toxic. They've been selectively bred to lower the amount of toxins, but because so many people are reacting to almonds that don't realize it, it's a, it's a hard pass. And then people are drinking almond milk, they're high in oxalates and mold, right? And then a scoop of protein. So typically people will use whey or casein if they're using casein protein, super damages the gut lining, worsens leaky gut beyond measure, the casein. That's like what's in cheese. It's a hard no. Right now we're sitting on a lot of gas and a loss of energy because skim milk with oats, if you had, it doesn't even say how many oats, but if you had a half a cup of oats, that'd give you about 20 to 30 minutes of a workout, and then you're starting, your blood sugar starting to crash. And that's for all of these starches. Cornflakes, it's even worse. You probably have 
10 minutes of a workout that's intense. The almonds and the apple, I don't know why society has become obsessed with almonds because it has almonds, walnuts, pistachio, another toxic genetically altered nut, cashew, strawberry, hazelnut, one scoop of protein. All, I mean, just awful, right? So the pear, the fruit is going to give you just minutes of energy. It's just going to give you glucose. It's not going to give you stored glycogen like the oats. At least in the breakfast, you're having oats, which will give you some storage of glycogen within the muscle. All right. So chapati doll. The heck is that? Okay. Two chapati doll. I don't even know what that is. Then we got vegetables, chicken, roasted chicken. And you know it's chicken breast. We've got day two. We've got this vegetables, chapati. I don't even know what that is. Chapat, chapati doll. And baked fish. I'm going to use the vegetables. And so we got baked fish. Of course, it can't be like pan fried with, with in, in fat. Uh, vegetables and chicken steamed. Again, no fat. I'm sure it's breast and so forth and so on. When we get, so right now we've gone from mid-morning to lunch. Then we have a late evening. I think they meant to say late afternoon. I hope they meant that. Scrambled egg, doesn't say how much, or boiled egg, boiled egg. These are just the worst meal plans I've ever seen. And I looked up a few people. This is pretty common what you see right here. Uh, we have salad sprouts and a chicken chapati. Do, chapati. Grilled chicken again, salad sprouts. So let's analyze this. They didn't put the times down. This is a seven day a week meal plan. Let's see if I can find another one. But let me tell you how your energy is going to go on this. Again, the oats for breakfast are going to give you a little bit of energy. You're going to feel bloated. And I mean, you might have issues with your skin or histamine because of this disgusting skin milk slime. Mid-morning comes around and you've got to be hungry off of skim milk and oats because you know they're probably just doing a half a cup of, of oats or muesli or cornflakes. And cornflakes is like eating air. So what's that? That has no, that's not logical. By the time mid-morning comes, you're hungry, right? Because you haven't had much so far. Skim milk with oats, no fat. Then mid-morning you have an apple and you have four almonds. What is four almonds going to do? Four, it's going to do nothing except tease the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And like, and, and just it's just going to tease you. The protein is going to make you bloated, which is going to make your blood sugar unstable. You're going to run out of energy within 10 minutes. But we're hungry again. Lunch comes around. And some people are fasting on this food. It's just waiting for a thyroid collapse and low testosterone to happen and estrogen dominance. So then you have a lunch and you're having chicken breast, you're having no fat, no fat soluble vitamins. We're doing vegetables. I don't know what kind, but again, with the fat missing, this stuff can be easily broken down and you're hungry again. So then I believe it says late evening, but I think it meant a late snack. Scrambled egg is not a bad idea for that afternoon time. But if you have an egg allergy, this is not a good deal. This is not a good deal. And then for dinner, we have this chapati and, and then salad and sprouts. So you're going to go to bed hungry on this diet. You're going to be starving, okay? This makes no sense. I really, because I get people like, well, could I just do a bodybuilder diet? That's what I did before. And I'm like, it's not a good idea if you're having problems with your gallbladder, if you're having problems with your blood sugar, if you're having histamine reactions, you have to find the dietary measure that's going to work for you. So for example, if you have a gallbladder issue, you would do low carb because you, you got to do high fat on a carnivore diet and you have to do high fat on a keto diet that leaves you low carb, high fat. And that's for the short term until you can work out that gallbladder right? But then we have a ketogenic diet, which to me is an optimal diet, but you have to be beyond your histamine reactions to certain plants. That's what carnivore is good for is to, to take the inflammation down. Because if you're having an inflammatory reaction and in histamine, 
basically to plants. You take them out, people feel good in the beginning, and then they rebound because they're not getting enough uh, substance or substrates for a diamine oxidase production, like fiber, like rest, like stable blood sugar. You don't have the tools to make diamine oxidase, especially if your gut is inflamed, your intestinal wall. Okay. Let me see if I can pull up another diet just to show you they're all the same and they're awful. They're literally the worst. They're very inflammatory and they're very hypoglycemic, these diets, and they destroy people's thyroids. So let me see if I can share another bodybuilder diet. Let's try this one. Okay. Bodybuilder diet. Okay, see this dude right here? You're not going to ever gain that much muscle. Ever. Oh, you haven't seen that picture yet. My bad. I know you can see it. You're never going to gain this type of muscle. This is somebody's taking enhancements, PEDs. So that's the world. I find it very fascinating. You know, it's not something I would do, but I don't hate on these people for doing it. I'm just going to dissect the diet itself. And to be honest, a lot of you guys are not recognizing average guys with a little testosterone, either pellets or cream. Like you guys don't understand that people who are getting into their late 40s, 50s, if they have muscles, look at the face matches the body. Face, body. If the face is aging, but they're super muscular and lean, they're taking enhancements. They're very normal now. Doctors prescribe them like TikTok, Tic Tacs. There's so many women I'm having consultations with, and they have low testosterone. They have like the lowest sex drive. They are flashing like crazy. They're gaining weight all around this middle area, and they're losing muscle, and they're fatigued, and the doctor gives them testosterone uh, to, to, you know, like you're going to feel amazing. Now you have to be a good responder to these synthetic garbage. And if you're not a good responder to these things, some people, I know a lot of guys who are taking testosterone, low levels, and it does nothing for them, like nothing except irritate their liver. So you're not going to ever do a bodybuilder diet and then grow muscle, especially that bodybuilder diet, because look how low calorie that first diet was. But let's get into the second one. Okay, this is another random diet. Let's see what this one produces. Okay, this is a beginner bodybuilder diet hmm, for strength training and building lean muscle, which I want to explain this whole myth of a lean muscle. Uh, lean muscle mass, one of the most important tools you'll need to add muscle without without fat, my people, is following the proper eating regime. This is like the worst concept. I don't know how people have been doing this for so long. So they're talking about you should eat, here's the protein thing, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. What? So if I'm 125 pounds, then I should be eating 125 grams of protein, which would shoot my blood sugar up to oblivion. Oblivion, make me feel incredibly tired. And if I don't drink enough water, hurt my kidneys. Now, the one gram of protein per kilo is a lot more logical, but you cannot access your body through some mathematical equation, my people. It's a hard pass, no. Let's see. So it says to eat grass-fed beef. Okay, this is a better one. Wild-caught salmon, organic turkey, chicken eggs, whey, case and casein protein, horrible inflammatory to the gut, shrimp, mercury, toxic, bottom feeder, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt. I don't know why people are so into cottage cheese and Greek yogurt. Um, they don't talk about if it's, if this is from grass fed animals. Um, cause these, these, uh, cottage cheese and Greek yogurt have, or these are animals been eating us a lot of soy. So a lot of people are having histamine reactions, especially to, uh, to goat and sheep milk and, uh, yogurt. So people be careful what you consume. 
So to keep your carbohydrate intake around 150 to 250 grams of carbs a day. So it's just complex carbs like sweet potatoes, yams, which is almost the same, brown rice, super ar arsenic, toxic, sprouted grains and breads. We've got the, the um, gluten problem, the oats, the cross-reactivity, beans, tear up the gut, quinoa, poisonous garbage. Uh, I'll, I'll, um, also, we have whole grain pastas are awful. Uh, so people with celiac disorder will just be dying on a diet like this. Okay, keep your simple carbs like fruit and white rice. White rice is a complex carb and so are potatoes. So I don't get what he's saying. It's not a simple carb. Uh, white potato, um, high in oxalates. People don't understand. Uh, see, for post-workout aid and recovery of fast absorption for muscle growth. What makes your guys' muscles grow, my people, is a functioning pancreas that is not insulin resistant and also develop GLUT4 receptor sites to uptake any glucose or fat needed for exercise. So a lot of people have their muscles shut down because they don't have this development or their insulin is not working properly because they don't go to bed early. Their electro electrolytes are jacked. They're having inflammation. The thyroid's jacked. They're fasting. No. It says to keep your fats. Now this is where it says keep your fats somewhere between 65 and 85. Even when I, and let me see from what sources, avocados, where's animal fat? Natural nut butters. They have phytic acid in them. So a lot of women who are low in iron, it robs your body of iron exponentially. Coconut oil is like eating air. It just has lauric acid, which is great for candida. Extra virgin olive oil, which most of it has canola oil mixed in it. It's garbage. Egg yolks. That's a good one. Uh, it says it's a healthy fat. That's good. So this is a more, I think, probably updated progressive thing that allow the egg yolks. But um, the types of foods, it says cereal with milk and berries. Garbage. One cup of whole grain cereal. Gut busting. Creating holes in the small intestinal wall. 1% milk. Oh my, garbage or almond milk, oxalates. So many children today are developing oxalates, crystals, pain and the muscle in the joints because they're having almond milk and don't realize that the load of oxalic acid in their body is just out of control, which is very painful and takes a long time to get rid of the, these oxalate crystals that begin to grow in a half a cup of berries. Now, if you're doing a low carb, high fat diet, I would allow something like a third of a cup of berries because I'm trying to keep the fructose because the berries today are not what's growing wild in nature. My people, these are genetically altered fruit with high levels of fructose. And a lot of you guys have developed fructose intolerance. So if you were to do a low carb, high fat diet, I wouldn't necessarily be running towards the berries. No. One whole egg for a wrap. Okay. Three fourths egg. We're uh, egg whites. This is a a uh, recipe for a wrap. One fourth cup of low fat cheese, garbage, spinach, oxalates, tomatoes, uh, block iodine from the thyroid gland. One fourth cup of salsa and a low carb tortilla. So as you can see in there, like here it says what bread and almond butter. Three slices of cinnamon raisin Ezekiel, Ezekiel bread. People think that Ezekiel bread is good. The only bread that is can be remotely okay is sourdough because it's been fermented. So the phytic acid is a lot lower, but it's not completely gone, my people. Not the phytic acid, the the uh, the protein gluten is is way low in in uh, in sourdough. More whey and casein blend protein garbage shakes. Edward, stir it, put it in the microwave. No. Uh, we got the more. We got oatmeal again. We got whey protein flavor. We got all, all mix all together and water cook according to the package directions to make what almond meal nut butter snack garbage. Cottage cheese muffins. That's a new trend now. People are making. Things out of like pizza dough and things out of cottage cheese. Um, grilled salmon, 
which is good. Four to five ounces. That's not a bad amount. The organic brown rice. So brown rice has arsenic in the hull and phytic acid. Can of tuna, mercury, mayo. You can make your own fat-free mayo. Garbage. People are like, can I have Dijon mustard? If there's no sugar in it, absolutely. Um, more chicken breast. It says five or six ounces. A tables, two table, tablespoons of avocado. They're so afraid of fat and these stupid things. Okay. These types of diets are what I see a lot of people coming from in the world of dieting. When you're cutting out the fat, your body freaks out because you need fat for everything. Your eyes, your lungs, all cell lining, your reproductive system, your hormones, your thyroid, your brain, depression, people develop depression without enough fat in their diet. So that right there should be a really huge clue to never do a diet like that. What happens when you do these bodybuilder diets is that they make your blood sugar so unstable, right? It's like you're having fruit and then you're having a complex carb. And so the body's going up and then you go crash and then you go up and then you go crash because there's nothing keeping you in the middle because you cut out the fat. Fat, when you're eating fat, you're going to digest this a lot slower. I hope there's no glitch in this because there's a glitch on my side. Fat slows down digestion. That's what's beautiful about fat. They're, they try to put the almonds in there for that, but they don't realize how inflammatory almonds are. Yeah. Don't ever do a bodybuilder diet. It's the first, you know, the first real way to damage your thyroid, your reproductive hormones. And that is the reason why you see people on the juice, right, on enhancements, doing bodybuilder diet because you can't build muscle on it. You know, a lot of them are trying to eat a bunch of carbs to then get amino acids into the muscle cell. But if you were to regulate your blood sugar, you wouldn't need all those carbs to drive the protein into the muscle so they would grow because you would become insulin sensitive and you only need a little bit of protein to then drive protein synthesis and uh, allow those muscles to grow while, while you're doing workouts with weight training and experiencing the sliding filament theory. And then we've got um, the fat. So we got the carbs. Their carbs are just garbage. I mean, if you're doing low carb, high fat, this second one wasn't bad, but they were mentioning like brown rice, which is super inflammatory. If you're gonna do rice, you're gonna do carbs, low carb, you do one third to one half cup of white rice. So all of the arsenic and garbage has been bleached out. But then you can also do things like sweet potato or, or parsnip, which are uh, slow burning starches. Keep your blood sugar a little bit more stable so they don't zing up and down like, let's say, um, rice wood. And you can have at least two tablespoons of an animal fat with the starch without gaining weight. It's when you start eating six tablespoons of animal fat on a low carb, high fat diet with rice. So sometimes people have to do carbs because their gallbladder is junked or they're super hypoglycemic. But what I notice with people who are, this is so glitchy. Look at this. Awful. I'm sorry, people. People with type 2 diabetes always should graduate themselves into doing a ketogenic diet. People with type 1 diabetes have to be very, very careful because if you fast and skip meals, you can drive your ketones up too high. So these are things that people don't know. And those ketones can become acidic. But I hope this helps. I'm going to stop recording this right now because it's getting very glitchy. And it just happens sometimes. If you want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com. If you need a consultation, book one through stephanieperson.com. I have a course. It's subscription-based. It's $15 a month. stephanieperson.com. And get ready for the challenge. I've been working on it. I think almost every day for the last four months. So you know I'm serious when I haven't released it fast. I really want to make sure it's something I'm proud of and that you guys are learning and getting something out of it instead of me just gaining financially from it, that you guys actually feel like you've learned something exponentially. Energy at 55, going on 56, 16 years being in ketosis. If I have to choose between like a bodybuilder diet, a ketogenic diet, a carnivore diet, I'm always going to choose a ketogenic diet because you're going to have 
You're going to have a little bit more potassium within the vegetables. You're going to have the fiber to help with diamine oxidase production, or if you decide to take any type of probiotic, then you'll have that bacteria being able to attach to something, to the prebiotic fiber. And uh, you can have more of a variety of food and not have to worry so much about your kidneys being overwhelmed because people can't become quite dehydrated on carnivore diets without realizing it and then eating too much protein and then having the uric acid buildup and lowering, thus lowering their, uh, their GFR and also compromising their thyroid when they don't eat enough fat. If you ate the fat that was on this meal plan for carnivore ketogenic diet, you're surely going to jack your thyroid. You have to hit at least 200 grams of fat, but find the diet that works best for you. Carnivore is great when you want to do it for the short term to get inflammation markers down. But if you stay on too long, you can rebound because of course, those things I mentioned, like uric acid, kidney function, uh, histamine starts to go bananas. And uh, yeah, your blood sugar is, is very difficult to stabilize. You're not going to make enough ketones to get into ketosis and you start having thyroid issues. So learn more and follow me here on YouTube. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook fan page is Stephanie, the business as in the body business person. And uh, it's been quite a journey. Life is good. Life is freaking bizarre. Oh, right now. But for now, it's still good. Peace.